friends, welcome back to my channel. Sassy, I'm here for another recap of Seeking Sister Wives. Ooh. Oh, I guess I should say Seeking Sister Wife. Y'all, we had one that's done. Took her feet to the street. Let's start with that. Okay? Let's start with that. So, we have Garrett, Danielle, and they are talking about finally moving into their, um, new house. They've been staying in that camper child for five months. So they're packing up some items, get themselves together, and lo and behold, honey, it's been a couple of months since they've been back from California visiting and seeing Leah. Well, they broke the news, honey. Leah said, I don't have time for the foolishness. Leah said that, listen, okay, I tried this, I didn't like it, it's some decisions that I need to make, some choices I need to make, and it feels like that maybe I couldn't make them, that some of them choices and decisions was made for me, aka Garrett, bottom line is, Leah said, I want my career. I want to be a nurse. I'm not trying to quit my job, Garrett. I'm not trying to work 30 hours a week, Garrett. I'm not trying to be coming home cooking and cleaning and scrubbing for you, Garrett. So Leah said, let me take my feet to the motherfucking street. And I say, good for you. Good for you. Get your career, girl. We letting that man tell you to quit your job to do what? So they're talking about that. And honey, to be true be told, they didn't seem that upset. Danielle was in the back like this. Internally, she was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Another one bit the dust. Just need one more. I just need for that bird to take her feet to the street. Because there's no way you can tell me that she don't want Garrett all to herself. See, she's in this lifestyle because Garrett is in this lifestyle. And you can't tell me no different. So they're talking about Leah the left. They don't even seem any emotional about it. So they talk about Bert. Now, it has been three years, three long, stressful, long years for Bert to bring her blood to the United States. And guess what, y'all? She got the visa approved and she got a passport. So what is stalling her from coming over here? I don't know. You would think that she would have jumped on the first flight. But Garrett says her visa's there waiting on her. Her passport's waiting on her. Literally, the only thing she has to do is go pick it up. But for some reason, she's dragging her feet. The immigration lawyer said she only have a limited amount of time. I don't know what she's waiting on, but she needs to get to getting. Or her visa's going to run out. And, of course, there's excuse after excuse after excuse. Travel, flight, the C-19. You know, her mom has been sick, which that's understandable. Her mom is in her 70s. She has health issues. Okay, I get that. But if that's the case, Bert, you need to tell her. There's a reason why she is stalling. Of course, she was upset about Leah, you know, Possibly being another wife, but honey, it's over and it's done with now. Leah done came to her senses. Have you came to yours? And let's not talk about that Garrett and Bert are married. Because remember, Danielle gave up her marriage just so they could. And she's sitting there talking about 
This isn't how, you know, a husband and wife should be together. You're married. And she's over there. You're over here. What type of marriage is that? Danielle, you sound real afflicted. See, that's what we say down here in these parts, in these neck of the woods. When somebody ain't talking quite right, there's a little, we say you sound afflicted. And that's how you sound it. You sound foolish. Why don't y'all think that uh, Bert's coming over here? Leave it down below. Let's move on. This is going to be real short and sweet, child. Sidian and um, Tasha. Sidian has made his way to the Philippines, child. Sidian has met Ariel. The dime piece that everybody won't snatch up. According to Ariel, this woman is the 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 diamonds of all Philippines. So they meet and thank God there's no translator app. Thank the Lord. So they're having a nice little conversation. They're getting to know each other. They're looking at the scenic view, the beach, and you know his little Airbnb and everything's good. Ariel is excited. She likes what she sees in Sidian. Sidian likes what he sees in Ariel. But the interesting thing, y'all know what I'm going to say. Y'all already know what I'm going to say. It's time for dinner. And so I'm like, okay, let's get to the dinner because I don't want to hear y'all no more. Child, the little woman comes out with three pieces of chicken. I said, that better be an appetizer. Did y'all see the three pieces of chicken? I was like, where's the sides? When y'all don't put, y'all don't serve no sides over in the Philippines. I said, uh-uh. No, no, sir, no man. Mm-mm. So they sit there, they, I think he had a chicken leg. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sidian is talking to Tasha, making sure that she's okay. He brings up that he has a transgender child and you know they had to move from one place to another so you know they could be more accepted and um honey Ariel is like I'm cool with it I don't see nothing wrong with it it's fine with me I don't have a problem with it which I find very very sweet good for you Ariel good for you so they're talking, they're drinking no wine, and they're looking at the scenic. They're doing the little kissy kissy, huggy huggy. They go back to um, the room, and he's like, You know, I, I just want to know, I want you to feel comfortable, but I want you to stay with me. And then they had this dramatic music, and you know, the pause, like Tasha's gonna say, Oh God, no, I don't want to stay with you. I don't feel comfortable. Girl, bye. We already know that she's going to say yes. We already know you're going to blow that back out. Or why did you bring those $4.99 pack of Trojans? Stay safe. Be safe. I spent way too much time on these two. Let's move on, y'all. Y'all, I'm not going to keep you. Now. Let's talk about Steve, honey, and Brenda. Now, as we last seen them, they was eating chicken, chicken noodle soup with a fork. Oh, yes. And they're still eating the chicken noodle soup with the fork. But it's a little bit hard for Steve to eat the soup because his face is cracked. Honey, that 16-year-old daughter of his done cracked his face. She done said, I don't approve of it. I don't approve of this extracurricular activity. I don't approve of these plural marriages. It's gross. It's disgust. Steve is in shambles, honey. <laughs> honey, Steve's face is red. He done got oily. I was like, Brenda. Brenda, go get a little blotting wipe. Wipe your man's forehead. He knows. Steve says that he don't understand where this is coming from. Where is this coming from? She has never said anything like this before. She's never spoken to me like this before. I am upset. I am angry. I am frustrated. 
The dollar said it's real simple. I don't approve of this. And I'm going to tell you how it really is. It's either me or whomever you bring it to this house. See, if you want me to be in your life, then you can't bring nobody else into your life. See, she done gave her father an ultimatum. I said, oh. Not the ultimate. So Steve is like, are you serious? You're giving me an ultimate and a, a decision over you or someone else? Over you of a possible second? What? No. That's ridiculous. And of course he says that, you know, this is a decision that shouldn't be made. But of course he would pick his daughter over someone else, but he shouldn't even be put in that position. And technically, he really didn't say that, but he said it in a roundabout way. Instead of him looking at his daughter and saying, listen, I love you. And if you have a problem with this, I shut it down. But see, he can't say that because he's on a show that's called Seeking Sister Wife. So the dollar's over in the cut like it is what it is. I done said what I said. You can deal with it. Meanwhile, Brenda is over there. Her internals are probably on fire. What's your thought on it, Brenda? Well, I really don't have too much to say. I mean, I'm going to let, you know, Steve handle it. Girl, right move. Brenda, you sitting there keeping your mouth shut is the best thing you could have done. Ain't no need in going back and forth with someone that's not your daughter. There's no need in going back and forth with a teenager who seemed like she can handle her own. Now see, she done cracked your man's face. Imagine what she would do to you. So the best thing that you did was to keep that mouth shut. But Steve is like, you know, she's never had this reaction before. When I was married to her mother and Brenda came in, we were all good. We were happy. We were a family. She liked Brenda. But as soon as that wife left, he says, everything just fell apart. Well, Steve, let me give you a little lesson. See, of course she was accepting of it because her mother was part of it. Her mother was there. And in her mind... You and her mother were still married. Brenda was an accessory. As soon as you take that mother out of the equation, it was a wrap. You two were no longer together, and here's Brenda making her move into being the stepmother. Absolutely not. The daughter wasn't having it. She don't have no relationship with Brenda. Her relationship, her loyalty is with her mother. And that's that on that. So you can be upset. You can be frustrated. You can be mad. You can be angry. You can, you know, cross the fly. But your daughter spoke how she felt. And whether you want to accept it or not, y'all just going to need to work it out. Now that son, he was like, I don't totally agree with our dad's lifestyle. But I am keeping an open mind. The son is cool with it. Because he loves his dad. And he likes Brenda. And he loves his mom. So I'm sure the, the brother is just trying to keep, you know, trying to keep everyone, you know, happy. He don't want, you know, to cause any type of discourse. But honey, that sister said, oh, well, that's on you, bro, bro. <laughs> that ain't how I be. It's disgusting. Those are her words. So here is Steve talking about, you know, um, he loves her and he wants the best for her and she done gave the thumbs up. My question is, where's April? Where's April through all this? We ain't seen or heard of her since that little sit down. Is she still in the picture? Mm, we shall see. Let's move on. Last and certainly least, child. Marcus, Danielle, April, and Jennifer. Did I get the names right this time, y'all? 
Child, I don't know. Y'all let me know. It's a lot to keep up. So they are at a staycation. And they're trying to get to know Danielle and see if she is fully in it to win. Because, see, they think that Danielle is not really grasping what a plural relationship is. It ain't just about, you know, having fun with the women and sleeping with the man. A lot comes with it. So they're just making sure she's ready. Again, she's 22, and this is her first plural relationship. So they're playing Never Have I Ever. And they're doing these different questions. And they're like, okay, Danielle, you know, do you have one? And, you know, Danielle, you know, talked about never have I ever, you know, been married and all this. So Marcus is like, hey, do you, do you see that in your future? Do you, do you see yourself getting married? Um, well, I, I mean, we, um, um, hmm. I'm like, Danielle, if you're going to answer this question. See, Danielle has a tendency of running from relationships. When it is just about time to be committed, fully committed, she moves on. She says she was in a relationship, but it wasn't quite what she wanted. So she dumped him because she seen someone else. And so everybody's antenna. When uh, Jennifer's, Marcus's, Marcus says that's very interesting. Once it's time to commit, or once it's time to settle down, she runs. Is she going to do that with us? Is that what she's going to do? We shall see. And Danielle said it herself. That she is jealous. Because she's not used to her man. Kissing other women. Well, Danielle, that's the least of your worries, honey. See, the kissing part is the least of your worries. See, not only are the other women kissing your man, they also going to be sleeping with your man. And apparently, they want to sleep in the same bed. Can y'all imagine sleeping in the same bed, everything just touching, the body heat? People, like somebody said in my comments, snoring and, and pooting and, and slobbering. No, sir. I know that. Uh-uh. So, Danielle, you got to compete with that. And that's something that you have to get used to. Because, again, this is a plural relationship. But Jennifer and April... They're down with Danielle so far. They even done got matching pajamas. They were cute. So it's time to go to bed. And so Marcus says, did we decide who I was going to sleep with first? So Jennifer is the lucky participant. Meanwhile, um, um. April and Danielle went and slept into another room. They didn't sleep together. They slept in the same bed. You mean to tell me in that house there wasn't another room? Y'all got to sleep together. Child, I'm all the way confused. So Marcus was like, don't worry about it. See, once I get finished with Jennifer, see, my stamina is on 100. See, I'm going to blow her back out, do some jumping jacks, run in place, and then one of you come in, I'm going to blow that back out. And then I'm going to do some sit-ups, run two miles, and then I'm going to blow that back out. Because, see, your boy don't play. All right, I don't play with the boom, nigga, boom. See, Marcus said, I can show you. Better than I can tell you. Well, see, he got all that stamina. He got all that time. He can blow four backs out at a time. Excuse me, three backs out at a time. Because, see, he don't work. He don't work. So, he got all this energy. That's it, y'all. I ain't gonna keep y'all. Y'all know what to do. What y'all think about this episode? Let's discuss it in the comments. 
don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends.